What in the world is Crackalackin, folks? That's right. It's a new one, fresh one for you. Hey, I'm excited. I'm excited today. I hope you are. You know, some may say yet again a day late. Look, sometimes I get busy. We're still covering these Apple earnings because it's relevant. This is important, okay? This is very important. Uh, Apple, look, this company's massive. $2.75 trillion market cap, the largest, most valuable company in the world. you got to talk about the earnings when they come out. Even if it happens to be a day late, I'm going to talk about these freaking earnings. And you're going to love it. Why do I say that? Well, hey, look, stock went up 4.69% today. It's a great, great number. There's no doubt. If you look after that decimal place, it's a fantastic number. They've done a great job to end that share price exactly where they needed to do for the day. They knew what they were doing here. Don't tell me these investors didn't know what they were doing. Anyways, here's what's going on. We're talking about these earnings. Why did it go up 4.69% off these? First off, we start with the, I think you know what. Look, my pick on the play. I know you heard me. I said, look, folks. This is one. I expected a beat on the top and bottom line. It's Apple. I've been following this company for a long time, obviously. One that I've owned for a while, too. Look, I know this company quite a bit. Every time we get into this nonsense rhetoric, and that's what happened here. Look, I iPhone demand, it's going to be terrible. It's not there. The iPhone's not there. What did I tell everybody? Look, iPhones are going to massively smash the expectations. You wouldn't believe what they did. Now, I did tell you, I agreed to it. The max segment's going to be weak. You know what? I absolutely nailed the prediction on the head, folks. I am the one who knocks on Apple. That's right. That's right, folks. Anyways, let's get cracking into this. Let's just take a look at these earnings, okay? No need to toot my own horn, but mother freaking toot toot, baby. That's a good clip right there. I don't know. I like that. I like that sound bite. I'm gonna use that one later, maybe. Um, I see the I see the release come out. Actually, it was a kind of a muted reaction to begin with. Um, after the earnings came out, you saw about a one percent move upward, and then really kind of flipped when we looked at the start of the market session here today. Uh, that is Friday, obviously, and uh, it started to move up quite a bit beyond that. So. I feel like I can't breathe right now. What's going on? I feel like the lungs are kind of weak. I feel like I'm <laughs> breathing huffing heavy right now. I'll just say I ran a marathon recently, and that's kind of what's doing it. Not that uh, it couldn't be any other reason. You see an EPS line, dollar fifty-two, a beat by nine cents. I know you're excited about it. Um, what is going on? Come on, this is amateur hour here. What is going on with the format? Am I? Do I have issues? Yes, I do. The double monitor setup is clutch because I can actually see what I'm looking at right now. Anyways, beat by nine cents on the EPS line. Obviously, it's fantastic to see a beat there because it's a beat. I don't know. What else do you want to say? When I see green, it looks great. We see gap EPS is also great. These companies are reporting non-gap. I don't like looking at it. I want to see the net income, okay? That's what I want to see. Now, from a revenue perspective, this this is where you see the big beat, folks. $94.84 billion. Now, to be fair, this is a 2.5% decrease year over year. They still beat the expectations by $2 billion. This was expected to be a much larger decline, and you want to know why? Because of iPhone. But what did they do? Tim Apple himself said, he smacked you right on the face, said, you folks are wrong. We look at the net sales by category. We see the numbers, right? iPhone at $51.33 billion. That's a $2 billion beat over estimation. That, that est, Estimation. Why does that not sound like a word? Overestimates. That's right. They smashed it. Increased 1.5% year over year. And they, this is supposed to be a, a weak quarter for them, right? This was this is all they talked about. The doom and gloom. There's no demand. They're not going to be selling the iPhones. Chip shortages. Everything going wrong. But they still posted a growth. Max segment, as I said, 7.71 billion, or 7.17 billion, 31% decline year over year. It's not a massive business. You see, the entire PC segment is struggling massively right now. And with it, you see iPads too. I mean, this is this is also one where you get again. Uh, this actually has been impacted a decent bit by manufacturing delays, 
and just overall overall issues in the supply chain still to this day, unfortunately. 12.7% decline there. Not looking great. From a wearables perspective, 8.75 billion, a 0.7% decline year over year. Not uh, not the greatest of line there, but relatively flat. A line that I am a big fan of, you know I am, because I've talked about it before, is the services line. $20.9 billion. We see a lot of services there. A lot of them. One in particular, you're looking at, you know, the Apple Card. This is a company that recently has partnered up with none other than, oh crap, was it Morgan Stanley? How? Oh no, I'm forgetting it right now. They partnered up with Morgan Stanley, I'm committing to it, to offer a absolutely interest-free loan. What What's going on here? How are they offering that? If you have an Apple Card, obviously. They're offering interest-free loans. I mean, this is a company really trying to build up a very diverse segment. We're even getting into the finance piece of it. So I like that segment a lot just because it adds some diversity. So Apple's not just going to be a hardware company. They're going to be also a hardware and service company that is very diverse in different segments. That is why I like that segment. And to see a 5.4% growth there is definitely nice. Now, what is the major piece of this too? Another big, big piece on why the stock went up. Not only an increase in the dividend, right? A 4% increase. We'll take it. The yield, I mean, we're talking about 0.5% still, right? That That's not what you buy the stock for. You don't buy Apple for the dividend yield. You don't buy it for the dividend, but you enjoy the dividend in the meantime while the share price goes up. Now, the real big piece of it, the board of directors has authorized an additional repurchase of up to $90 billion of common stock. Holy cow. Holy cow. $90 billion uh, of stock? That is a massive buyback in a time in which a lot of companies are, you know, they're doing everything they can to keep the cash on hand where it's at, right? They don't want to do extra spending right now. But Apple, this is a company that, they're a little bit different, right? They make a lot of money on a gap standpoint, right? A net income standpoint and cash flows are really, they're really elevated on this company. And for that reason, they feel like they're able to buy back stock. Obviously, will impact their EPS line significantly depending on when these purchases take place. But it's it's worth taking a note. I mean, that, that's pretty exciting. A couple things to look at here. Um, this was the first quarterly revenue drop in uh, four years. But... You know, again, that is something we have to note, right? It is a quarterly revenue drop. You don't often see it from a company like Apple, but they did it. Um, they did it, and the stock still went up, right? They did beat consensus by a hefty margin, to be fair, right? Um, <clears throat> yeah, what, el- what else do we got here? Revenue from the greater China area down 17.81, uh, or sorry, is up seven, uh, is at 17.81 billion which is down 2.9% year over year. That is definitely a segment that is ha- that has struggled for them here too. I mean, we're talking about most companies are seeing a bit bit of struggle in the greater China area as they've still got a decent amount of restriction in terms of uh, none other than the virus you can't mention anymore, okay? Can't talk about it. But I still want to get into some words here from none other than Tim Cook or Tim Apple, as some of us might call him. We were pleased to report an all-time record in services and a March quarter record for iPhone despite the challenging macroeconomic environment and have installed base of active devices reaching all-time high. That's obviously massive. Uh, you know, as a primarily hardware company, to be fair, they uh, they want more devices out there because that not only, you know, it, it builds the network. That is a big, big thing for them. You build the network, and then obviously that helps grow your services just in general, right? As your devices are out there, more people are becoming brand loyal. It's massive to them, right? Everyone be having an iPhone out here. I don't, okay? I don't have an iPhone. It makes me feel like, they make me feel like a peasant when I don't have one. I, look, I just don't want to, I just don't want an iPhone, Okay? I'm fine with I'm fine with what I got. People make me feel like I'm an absolute loser. Anyways, here here's what uh, what I found a little bit uh, interesting here. So we continue to invest for the long term and lead with our values. Okay, that's not interesting. But here we go, including making progress towards building carbon neutral products and supply chains by 2030. Okay, guys, come on now. 
do we need to throw that one in there as a comment? It's not really all that interesting. I just had to throw that out there. Look, they're always focused on this nonsense. The shareholders don't give a crap about this nonsense, carbon neutrality. Look, we want a company that's efficient. We want a company that makes money. Shareholders don't care about carbon neutrality. A few, maybe, okay, let's be honest, maybe 5% of them do. The rest of us just want to make money off of our shares. Let's just be honest, and we want to do the best thing we can do to do that. Now, maybe these buzzwords might be the best thing for them. Who knows? Year-over-year -year business performances uh, improved compared to the December quarter. Obviously, great there. Operating cash flow at $28.6 billion. Definitely worth mentioning. And um, they returned $23 billion to shareholders during the quarter as well. Obviously, in the form of buybacks as well as dividends. Fantastic there, too. Now, we look at the actual data. I, I love looking at these, these financial reports. Why do I got to bring it? Oh, you know I'm talking about this bad boy. So from a, obviously a three-month ending standpoint, <clears throat> they give us kind of a year-over-year -year line. That's where you see the, the drop. These services, you saw a $1 billion increase on here, which is certainly very nice. We do love to see that. Now, I'm going to get into net sales by category because that one is uh, certainly worth, worth giving a chat about, right? This is where we see great numbers. From a three-month ending standpoint, year-over-year, Actually, a growth in iPhone, which is crazy to believe based off of, you know, kind of what we've been told. Here's another move on the fly. Just take a look at this. Take a look at the advancement I've making here. I mean, folks, have you ever seen me do stuff like this? No, you haven't. I'm really caring about this, okay? Mac, though, ugh, there's that 30% decline. You don't love to see it. You just don't. Um, but iPhone, you know what? I, I do love to see that. iPad, weakness there. Billion dollars less uh, in terms of that. Wearables, not much difference um, really to take a peek at there. Services, that's what we covered earlier too. We're looking great in that line. Now the balance sheet, what do we got on the balance sheet? <clears throat> okay, folks, we look at this compared to six months ago. I see a massive decline here in, in this total current uh, current assets. And, you know, worth mentioning, where where's that decline really coming from? Well, most of it's this account receivable line um, has declined quite a bit, as well as the vendor non-trade receivables. Now I don't know what's going into this vendor non-trade receivables. This is probably going to be things like chips and other products like that. That's uh, going to be used uh, more from really an inventory standpoint, I would presume. Now. The non-current assets, let's just look at the total assets in general. Another decline here too, but again, that's really just by this total current asset line. Nothing else changed too much on this standpoint uh, in terms of overall uh, value from a total uh, long-term asset standpoint. $332 billion in this company right here, which uh, does compare to a you know 352 of six months ago. So that's de a decline mostly here, really just because that total current asset line, like I said, from a liability standpoint, $120 billion. That compared to 153 though. So you see they did decrease that total current liability line by a significant margin. Uh, definitely a lot more. Really, this account's payable. Looks like they paid down. I'm guessing they had some debt due, obviously. They paid it down in this quarter in particular, and that's a massive decline there. Definitely by more than they you know, decreased the assets, which is good. Total liabilities from a, you know, just a total standpoint, at 270 compared to 302, same story. It declined by just as much as your total current line did. So really good to see that. Puts our equity line at $62.1 billion, which is obviously great for the shareholders. You'd love to see that one. Now, last thing to touch on is going to be a net income standpoint. Now, this is going to be a uh, you know six months ending from a you know year-over-year -year standpoint. A little bit less net income when you look at uh, the past six months compared to you know the previous six months from a year ago, uh, previous six months ending period. A little bit of a decline there in net income. Now overall, I don't think this is too crazy. Um, just putting my spin on it. I, I just think that's you know it, it is a, a more difficult time for them, and we're gonna accept that. I think that's okay. Depends on how you feel as a shareholder. And I'd love to let you you know I'd love to hear you on that one. What do you feel like? is going on here with Apple. Is this one that's fair? I mean, this this is after today's move, still trading at a P ratio of 29.49, which all things considered, not overly expensive, you know, historically for where Apple trades at. I mean, that's relatively cheap. Now compared to the whole market, it is definitely more expensive than a lot. And it's still the most valuable company at 2.75 trillion. 
Does this company still have just big old legs here like me? Have you seen these ham hocks? They're massive. But do they have legs still? We'll have to see that. I want to let you know, uh, or, or I want to see what you think in the comments. Let me know. Do you, do you think Apple's got room to grow from here? Or is this thing just, look, is this overvalued? Just tell me right now, is this a bad sign this quarter? You know, my opinion, I don't think it is. I think it's plenty fine. What they've done, the data looks fine. Uh, and I'm okay with it. But it is worth uh, worth taking a look. What do you feel about Apple? Apple? All right, folks, that's what I got for you here today. You have a great one. I appreciate you.